And it's 20 minutes after 4 o'clock. Welcome back to the Lisa Wexer Show at 1490 WGCH and com anywhere. Well, you know, one of the things I love to do, particularly on Thursdays, is talk about what's happening in the theater. And on Monday night, I had the marvelous experience of seeing Ruthless with these two talented ladies. Kim Mareska plays the mom. Tori Murray plays the daughter. Hello, guys. Welcome to the show today. Hello. Hi. 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 So let me just give our audience a little bit of background. Kim, you're the mom, and you hail, you hail from Fairfield. Isn't that right? That is right. And I understand you were at the Westport Playhouse not too long ago as well in Twelfth Night. That is also true. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> and, yes. and Tori, you're a Jersey girl. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and you, were you discovered, tell me if this is true, I only know what I read, were you discovered singing at your grandmother's funeral? Yes. Mm-hmm. How did that happen? Um, well, my grandmother had a friend who was an agent. And so I sang at her funeral, and um, the agent was there, and she saw me sing, and she invited me to come into New York. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, before that, I mean, what, what caused you to sing at your grandmother's funeral? Were you somebody who just loved to sing and prepared a song for that special occasion, or were you already singing regularly? Um, I like to sing, and I would sing at, like, Christmas parties and things like that. I'd never given doing it professionally really a thought, so it was just kind of, um, I've been doing that kind of thing before, so. And I just want to know, I just got to ask you, Tori, what's it like to audition at your age? I mean, do you get nervous and butterflies, or do you feel like, hey, I'm a kid, you know, it doesn't matter all that much? Um, a lot of my auditions are for, like, um, things, because I'm so short, I have to audition for, like, <laughs> younger parts. <laughs> So a lot of my auditions are just really fun, you know? We just, like, um, I figure, like, if I mess up, who cares? There's always another one, so. That's serious. <laughs> Well, that's good, and you've got a powerhouse voice. You really do. You know, what's been startling to me, uh, we're talking with Kim Mareska and Tori Murray about Ruthless, which they are starring in right now, and you can find it at the St. Luke's Theater in the city, is how many parts right now and how many shows are revolve around stories around children. Kim, have you noticed that? Absolutely. That's, that's really true right now. Didn't you just see School of Rock Tour? Yeah. It's a perfect mm-hmm. show for you. Which one? School of Rock. Oh, I saw School of Rock twice in the last month. You know, right. you know why? Because the first time I saw it, Alex Brightman was out with the stomach flu. Me too. Really? I missed him too, yeah. So, gee, that must have been that week. He missed like three yeah. performances in one week. Uh, and anyway, I went, fantastic. Well, I went back to the publicist and I said, that's not fair. I have to see you with Alex Brightman. He's probably going to be nominated for the Tony. So they gave me another couple of passes, so I saw it again. He was great. It was a great show. Can you go one more time, Lisa? Bring bring a friend. I would love to. Anytime you say, I would. But between that and Matilda and your show, Ruthless, there's a yep. there's a lot going. Even Fun Home, in its own way, yeah. There's yep. a lot going on from the point of view of children and their own development. It's true. And so true. and so so Kim, tell me about how you see this show, Ruthless. Talk talk to me about the show. I love this show. I I loved this show from the moment I read the script. Joel, our director and, and writer and lyricist, sent it to me before my first audition. And my first reaction was, oh, my God, this is brilliant and hilarious and the script of my dreams. So I've been in love with it since then. And it's been really, really fun for me to watch it kind of grow, you know, from our little production at the Triad, which is where I met our Tori, to, you know, ending up here off Broadway, running for over a year. And I'm just, we're all just very, very proud of it. And you start off as almost like a 50 starched housewife. Yep, yep. Like Stepford wife, kind of Donna Reed, kind of, you know, happy, I love cooking and cleaning kind of lady. And I have Quite the transformation. Quite. About ha- about halfway through. Quite. Quite the transformation when you find out your bloodlines. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And, <laughs> and so, of course, it begs the question. I was telling our audience before you joined us that the plot is accurately described as a combination of the bad seed meets gypsy. Right? Absolutely. Right? 100%. Yep. And, of course, you have to know what that means because I actually was surveying the younger people here at the station, and to my utter chagrin, nobody even knew what Gypsy was, but, you know, that's their problem. So, <laughs> I know what, right? Can you imagine? Magic. I know. 
It's really heresy altogether. So, it is. I know. I know. It's, it's called being educated in an educated world. Um, so, so, Tori, but when you see this, let me ask you something. When you read the script, at the young age of what, you're 11? Uh, when I first read it, I was 10, actually. Okay, so even at 10, and having done auditions and seeing what goes on, even in the waiting rooms, and knowing your own peers... Did any of this in a, in a small way, I know this is an exaggerated form, but did any of the themes of ruthless ambition, even in very young people, did any of it strike home? Well, I mean, when I first auditioned for this show, I had really never done anything before. This was like my first big audition. And I, I just still didn't have like that um, desire to be on stage. I just kind of did this because I was like, hey, it's an audition. Why not? So I did it. So I didn't really have any of that ambition yet. I mean, I guess it's changed a little over time. Like now, you know. You love it now. I mean, like now, like that I've been on stage, I want to be on more scenes yeah. and stuff. Obviously, not to the extreme, like in the show, but. You, you mean you mean you're not you're not sure you would kill anybody yet for the part? No, all about <laughs> Eve and you. I love the not all not about yet. Eve reference. Okay. By not the way, yet. Tori, have you seen All About Eve? I haven't. No, I've never seen it. Well, there's a a very obvious reference to the movie All About Eve in the fact that, you know, late stage in the play, that other character is named Eve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Has this already been explained to you? Um, I think so, yeah, because in the playbill it says actually the character's name is Eve All About. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, well, you got to see the movie. Let me put it that way. It's one of the. It's one of those girls that sees the movies and says, "Oh, that's from Ruthless." Yeah. Oh, that's right. You're right, Kim. You're right. Yeah. And so, Kim, how did you get the theater bug? Did you get it as a young girl growing up, or did you? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. I I always had it. It it, it never went away. Um. You know, I had my my parents are just wonderful. I grew up going to theater and ballet and and museums, so I was always attracted to the arts and. I started doing the plays, you know, as early as elementary school and then all through middle school and high school and all through college. And, you know, the bug just, it, it, I think once you have it, it doesn't really leave you. You can do other things, but that desire to be on stage never goes away, at least not for me. So here's what I want to know. We're chatting with Kim Mareska and Tori Murray, who were the stars of Ruthless. Go see it. It's at the St. Luke's Theater in New York. It's great. It's a lot of fun. It's an adorable theater. Uh, I, I want to know from you, Kim, how do you, because Tori, you're too young, how do you, how do you talk to yourself in a way that your ego is properly massaged uh, and that you can keep going forward even though you know that rejection is part of the game? Well, that's a good question. But, you know, Tori said it really well in, in the beginning of the interview and in that every audition has to be treated as an opportunity to perform and have fun. And every rejection has to be treated as a learning experience and not taken personally. That's really all you can do in this in this crazy business. Listen, you know, otherwise you'll go crazy. You won't go to auditions. I know. That's like, what you know, I would do. Right. I would run right. away. I wouldn't want to be rejected. Right. So I would just give up on the whole thing. Yeah. You can't, you can't really let the ego become a part of it. You just have to trust and, and be your best self in every audition. And if it's not what they want, maybe the next one will be. And how do you get an agent and all that stuff? Like for people that are listening right now that are dreaming the way you dreamed at one time, how do you get started? Well, classes, of course, you know, being being great at your craft and that in musical theater, of course, is the singing and the acting and the dancing in most people's cases. But, uh, you know, I've managed to escape without the dance so far. <laughs> You're pretty graceful on the stage. I'm sure you'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. I am also wearing four-inch heels, so I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing my best. Not you do tall. look very tall, I must say. When you came off the stage, I thought, oh, there's a normal height. I, I, I actually was commenting to my daughter, she's very tall, the mother. She yes. towers above everybody. You even tower above the, the guy that's playing in, in drag. I know. Well, <laughs> apparently, I almost didn't get the part because I was too tall. So, oh, that's funny. Needless to say, I went to the callback wearing flats. <laughs> But, That's really funny. Yeah. Uh, Tori, you are a belter, you know, in the tradition of Andrea McArdle, and the score calls for that. Is that easy for you? Um, yeah, it's always been kind of there. I mean, I, you know, actually, belting is a lot easier than trying to do um, things in, like, 
softer for me. It's always been like I have to quiet down instead of get louder like it is for most people. Well, I, I, well I like that it's loud. <laughs> Do we have the clip of the mother and daughter singing together? Is it ready? Right now? You got it from me, Chris? Okay, we're going to play it. Oh, boy. Here we go. That was the voices. Congratulations, guys. Those are the voices yes, of, of Tori Murray and Kim Mareska who are playing in Ruthless. I have to say, so you know I saw it with my daughter, and it was a pleasure to meet you guys after the show. Mm-hmm. And so on the way home, the long ride home to Westport, I said, so who does that remind you of? Is there anybody in the family that that competition between mother and daughter reminds you of. And actually, we both came up with somebody. Thank God it wasn't me. Thank God she didn't turn around and say, <laughs> Mommy, that's you. It wasn't me. But we do have uh, cousins in our, in our family where, you know, the mother always used to compete with the daughter. And it didn't really end too well, to be honest. It doesn't end too I- well. I, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not like it ended in the show. Right. <laughs> but, but, you know, yeah. The, I think the reason that Ruthless has had such staying power, other than the charm of the musical and all of that, is it's actually getting to themes a little bit close and a little bit targeted yeah. and funny that, yeah. that you actually can observe in certain families. You can. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, ladies, it's a pleasure to have you on. Go see the show. It's called Ruthless. Thank you for providing us with a couple of tickets to give away. We'll be doing that right after the news. And Tori Murray and Kim Mareska will be looking for you in this production and future productions. Best of luck and success. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you for having us. A pleasure. It's 433. I'm Lisa Wexler at 1490 WGCH and WGCH.com anywhere.